This morning, the Raspberry Pi Foundation announced a new 8GB version of the Raspberry Pi 4. They've been selling a 1, 2, and 4GB version for the past year, and I've been using all three models in my projects. More RAM is always better because you can fit more applications on the same Pi, especially if you're using them in a Kubernetes cluster, like I am in my Pi cluster series. But one problem with more RAM on a Raspberry Pi is that the current version of Raspbian, which is a 32-bit operating system, can only use a small amount of the memory for any given process. So one application couldn't use all 8 gigabytes of RAM in the new Pi model. So the Raspberry Pi Foundation also announced that Raspbian OS is now going to be called Raspberry Pi OS, and there's a new 64-bit beta version available today. You can download it from the Raspberry Pi forums, and as with everything else, I've put a link to it in the description below. What's so great about 64 bits? Well, there are lots of reasons, some which are more technical, and I, I probably can't get to all of them in this video, but one very practical thing is there's more software, especially for things like Docker images, that's built with ARM 64-bit compatibility. As an example, many of the container images that I'm going to use in my next Raspberry Pi cluster video are available for x86-64, which is basically modern Intel or AMD processors, or sometimes ARM64, uh, but they won't run on any current Raspberry Pi running Raspbian. But more and more, ARM64 images are becoming available, and these work on all 64-bit ARM processors, like the ones in AWS ARM instances, or if you run Ubuntu 64-bit on your Raspberry Pi. This new 64-bit Pi OS will allow me to use all those Docker images and software, and that's a really good thing. In the comments on the blog post announcing these new products, Eben Upton also dropped some new information. He said that the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 will be released this year. This is really good news for the performance of my Turing Pi cluster. Also, Simon Long, a Raspberry Pi employee, said there would be more details about the transition from Raspbian to a Raspberry Pi OS in a new blog post that's going to come out tomorrow. I've been testing the beta 64-bit OS today, and here's what I learned. Some guides and software that have special Pi configurations are currently a little bit broken on the 64-bit OS. One interesting thing I noticed is with Raspbian, if you check the OS release file that's in Etsy OS release, the name is set to Raspbian. But with Raspberry Pi OS, the name is Debian. So if software uses this name as a, a way to see whether it's running on Raspberry Pi or not, that can actually break things. I also ran a bunch of short benchmarks on the 64-bit OS, then ran the same benchmarks on the current Raspbian 32-bit release, and the results were kind of surprising. A lot of CPU-heavy operations are faster on the 64-bit OS. I have a link to a blog post with more info about these benchmarks in the description. In the real world, outside of benchmarking, you won't notice a huge difference, but it is faster. But the bottom line is this, don't get too angry if you download it and you're using beta software and you run into some issues. While I was doing my testing, the Pi locked up a couple times and I had to reboot it, a force reboot one time, and I couldn't figure out exactly why it happened. If you need something stable, stick with the current Raspberry Pi OS and wait for the 64-bit version to get out of beta. I don't yet have the 8GB Pi 4, but I've ordered one and hopefully I'll be able to share my thoughts on it soon. I'm working hard on the next video for the Pi Cluster series, and I know a lot of people are interested in, in them. So to make sure that you see them, please click subscribe below and support my work on Patreon or GitHub sponsors, and there are links, of course, in the description below. Until next time, I'm Jeff Geerling.